Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about the best digital camera that I've ever touched, in my opinion. And that is... The Leica Q. Before the Leica Q, I primarily used film cameras. Last year, I bit the bullet and made the conscious decision of shifting from film to digital. And I've shot about a thousand rolls on my Leica M6, so this wasn't a very easy decision for me to make. I've primarily been a 28mm and 35mm shooter, so after I've talked to many people, including uh, like a Q user uh, named uh, Jesse Marlowe, he's an amazing photographer that I respect highly, and a couple other photographers, I decided to jump ship. I wanted to go through three things that I think the camera does astoundingly, and that I find very interesting compared to other cameras. I'm hoping that I can provide information that's a little bit hard to find online, so it's going to be a little bit more opinion based but bear with me. I do promise to make this video more from an artistic perspective and from a dedicated photographer's perspe perspective. But, but just before that, can we just take one moment to appreciate how amazing the box is and how, it's, how this product is presented? So I think I've opened a fair amount of camera boxes in my life and I'm not usually too overly excited about them because when I buy a camera it's made from a very conscious decision so by the time I've done the research and looked into what's good and I buy it online or in the store or whatever and I bring it home then it's kind of like yeah this is mine I'm gonna use it and it's gonna be a tool and that's how I feel about cameras usually but this one when I ordered it online and it came to my house and as I was opening it, for some reason I felt really hyped about it. And I think it's because of how the box is presented. And it comes with many things that you actually need. Like it, uh, it comes with two batteries, which is great because the battery life isn't amazing. It comes with pouches for the accessories. And with this box, you see that? Look at that. Wow. And you can open it like that. This is where the camera's in, or used to be in. And it opens up like that, little drawers. In my opinion, it's just a brilliant package design. It's, it's nice. So the three merits that I see in this camera are versatility, sensor and lens, which is basically the overall look of the image. And three is focusing. But a lot of it comes down to how versatile the camera is. So number point one will be the, the most important point. So I've mentioned that I shot a lot in my Leica M6, and I, I had, in a way, my own way of shooting. But after I got the Leica Q, I was shooting in different ways. I took portraits from before, I did a lot of streets and candid stuff, and then I started taking some nature stuff and more abstract stuff. I started noticing that I probably started shooting all of this because I changed the gear that I was using. And I, th and I say to myself, so what has changed and what is allowing me to do this within the camera? And I think it comes down to a few things, but some of the things that I've able, I'm able to um, crack down, I would say, is the crop modes, the manual focus plus autofocus system, the macro option, and the low off stop of 1.7. And the thing about the crop mode is that, so because I always shot on the Leica M6, and I was very used to rangefinder, and I was using a 35 mil primarily, my actually idea when I first got it, and I still do use this, is if I use the 35 mil crop mode, I actually get something that looks like a rangefinder. I get this, I, it's an EVF, but still, I get the box, and then I get to see outside of the box too. So that's how I shoot a lot. I, I use it at crop mode 35 mil, and then I use it kind of as like a rangefinder. And when you have glasses on, it's hard to get the perfect rangefinder magnification, and it's really hard to dedicate yourself to one 
you know, a rangefinder. The low f-stop of f4.7 is amazing because at 28 millimeters, actually, if you have something like an f2.8 or something, it's not gonna be that blurry. And sometimes it's nice to have the option to get some nice bokeh in your image, especially if you're shooting on the crop modes of 35 or, or even 50 mil. The macro, I would say I don't use too often, but it's fun to use it sometimes, especially if you're getting really, really close to the subject, obviously. The manual focus and autofocus, I will be going through this uh, at this point later. Point number two is the overall look, which is basically the sensor plus lens equation. I'm a strong believer that images speak for themselves, so I'm hoping that my sample images um, within this video show you what this camera is capable of, but sometimes I'm not f able to fully express how this works for and what conditions this works, but when the condition is correct enough, you get this strange medium format-like look to the images. Another point I've noticed about the images that come out of this camera is how round the images are. It's hard to explain, but the images look very round to me, but at the same time, they look hyper real. Like they're reality, but there's something more to it. Another thing is the very little distortion that this lens has. To me, somehow uh, the images out of the Leica Qs can even look like a 35mm sometimes because there's a strange compression or lack of distortion. Obviously when you shoot a subject up close for like a portrait or something and if you get really close like that, then you see distortion just because that's the nature of a 20mm lens. But when you're shooting from you know, mid-range or when you're shooting street stuff normally, then yes, there's basically no distortion. And it even, at least in my opinion, has this compressed look to it. Maybe because it's full frame. So compared to maybe like Fuji's or the GR's, it looks a little bit more compressed. So at least to me, it has, there's a little bit more beauty to the image. And the last point, but not least, with the overall look of the image is the color rendition. The colors on the Leica Q are really good. They can look good even in shadow situations, which is hard to obtain with digital sensors, at least from what I see. And obviously under correct lighting conditions, the colors are amazing. And you can do whatever you want with them, obviously, too. My last point, point number three, is the focusing. And this is probably one of the main features of the Leica Q, at least from my perspective. I say this because the Leica Q has amazing autofocus, but it also has an amazing manual focusing system. And that's one problem that I think many digital cameras face these days is So let me let me let me talk about an example. So Fuji, the X100 series, X Pro 2 series, uh, the X Pro series, they are rangefinders. However, the problem with that is they don't have, for Fuji, they don't have focusing tabs on the lenses. And because of the nature of APS-C, it's really hard to make that as well. Hello, Future Ulysses here. I'm going to jump in and mention that I th although I think that uh, the Fuji cameras are great in its own way, sometimes the rangefinder part of it does feel a little bit half-assed because they do give you a rangefinder style camera, but they don't actually give you a manual focusing system that accompanies it or that kind of completes the entire system. On the other hand, although the Leica Q is not a rangefinder camera, it gives you a very big, bright EVF on the left side of the camera so you can use your right eye um, with it when you're seeing and again, with the 35mm crop mode, actually, you can kind of use it uh, in a rangefinder style. And all of this is neatly packaged in a fully functioning manual focusing system that is very responsive, which also gives you uh, an amazing and smooth focusing tab with a distance scale. But also, don't forget, the Leica Q has autofocus too. And the autofocus is actually amazing. So I used to shoot only Leica M, uh, like an M6, 
And so when I moved to like a queue, I thought I'd be fully shooting manually and only manually. Little did I know that I ended up shooting a lot of autofocus now. Just because the autofocus is just so fast on this camera, I sometimes I just don't care and I put it on autofocus and I feel comfortable on it these days. And guys, I know I said it's three things, but can we just appreciate how sick the camera looks? Also, it feels sturdy, feels nice in the hands. There's actually a thumbs, not up, but there's like this, there's a crease in the camera to put your thumb. And this is an amazing design, I think. It really holds well because of that thumb thing. Also, the focusing, the clicks sound really nice and it's very smooth. Nice. And I forgot to mention, actually, I have the Leica Cube P. But it's, per it's pretty much the same camera. So guys, that's it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this got you guys interested in the Leica Q or at least um, informed you about how amazing this camera is. Obviously, if I had the money, I would get a Leica Q2, but, you know, yeah, it's life. And clearly, there's many amazing cameras out there, so I'm not saying this is the only camera that you can buy, but I would like to appreciate how amazing this tool is and what it has allowed me to do until today. Okay guys, so thanks for watching this video. I hope this provided some new insight to the camera, or old insight because the camera is about five years old. But still, yeah, I hope this vi uh, video was informative and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, please hit the like button. It really helps me because I'm trying to get more YouTube videos out. Thanks again. See you guys. Bye.